So last time, we looked at how to take the derivative of parametrized curves, and we saw how we could take those derivatives and use it to measure important things like the velocity of our curve and the speed of our curve, meaning the speed and velocity uh, of the curve as it's being parametrized in that given moment in time. Uh, there's an immediate consequence to this that we should discuss before we go further, uh, and that is that we can use this information to measure the length of a curve. And when I say length, what I really mean is if I were to draw my curve, so here's a curve like this, what I really mean is the total length of this curve as if it were a piece of string, right? So I could sort of lay a piece of string on here and then tauten or tighten that piece of string to make it a straight line, uh, measuring the length of that straight line. And so I want to be able to do this using some of the information that we've already discussed. Now, full disclosure, uh, <clears throat> the measurement of length of a curve is a topic that's discussed in more detail in Calculus 3, or in multivariable calculus. Uh, and I'll save a really, really rigorous treatment of that for Calc 3. Uh, but for our purposes, I want to talk about how do we measure the length of a curve? Well, intuitively, we can do this by measuring the total distance traveled by a particle tracing out the parametrized curve, right? So there's really little difference between tracing out this total length and tracing out the distance traveled by the particle, if we want to think of it as a particle, that is doing the tracing. Uh, now there's a slight nuance here that I, I do want to, to make sure to mention, uh, and that's that in order to make this leap, we want to make sure that our, our parameterization isn't doing anything too funky. Specifically, uh, I want to make sure that my parameterization isn't doing something like this, where I trace out part of the curve, and then I backtrack over the exact same curve for a certain distance, and then I go forward again, uh, and then maybe I end up you know, completing the curve, something like that. But if my parameterization were to have my particle retracing its steps, well, that would be problematic, and I couldn't measure the total length of this locus by measuring the total distance traveled, right? sort of like retracing our steps would add on extra distance traveled. Uh, so as long as we assume that nothing weird like that is happening, uh, this leap is okay. Okay, so how do we measure the total arc length? By measuring the total distance traveled by the particle. Uh, and how do we measure total distance traveled? Well, in true Calc 1 style, we can measure the total distance traveled by integrating up the speed at which we were traveling. All right, and so here's where some of those details uh, would occur that I'm pushing under the rug, saving them for Calc 3. Um, but what this leads us to, to conclude is that the total arc length can be met, I should say the total length of the curve, which we'll now formally define as arc length, can be measured by integrating up the speed of the parameterization. Uh, so, more formally, let x be a parameterized curve uh, in parentheses with nothing funky happening, right? So a parameterized curve that's not tracing back over its steps. Then the arc length of the curve is simply going to be computed using this integral, where we're integrating up uh, from the endpoints of time, a to b, the speed x prime of t dt. Right, so to quickly clarify this, the a and b, those are the endpoints of our interval of time. Right, so that was our interval here was really just the interval a to b, like this. Uh, and so with those two moments in time sort of identified, uh, then our total length is an integral from a to b of x prime of t dt, the norm of x prime of t dt. An interesting thing to, that, that I think is worth pointing out is, again, sort of schematically, remember here's our sort of schematic, right? There's our interval of time i, and then through this parameterization x, what we get is a curve, you know, sort of out here in R2, right? So this is my curve whose locus is the set of points here. Uh, this is my x of t. So to compute the length of this object, this object right here, I'm actually doing all of my computing using the t variable, right? In fact, this integral that I'm computing is an integral over t. And this quantity, uh, the norm of x prime of t, is just a function of t. For any given t, I can compute 
what the norm of x prime of t is. So the actual integral I'm computing is taking place with this t variable over this t domain between the endpoints of a and b, even though it's measuring something about this physical uh, you know, locus, this, this, this curve over here. So that's kind of interesting. Just want to point that out. Uh, I also want to point out that we can measure not just the entire length of a curve, but a length of certain subsets of the curve as well. Right? And to be slightly more precise, I want to talk about measuring the length of the curve up to a given point in time. So not just measuring the entire length, but maybe the length up to, you know, maybe the halfway point or something like that. Okay, so put another way, the arc length that we just measured, measured the length of our curve over the entire interval a to b. So from time a up to time b. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna phrase this as the length of a curve up to time b is given by this integral. Now I'm phrasing it that way because I can actually use this idea to measure the length of a curve up to any given moment in time. So specifically, uh, first let me do this sort of clever maneuver here where I'm going to change my, my variable of integration. Right? I'm just going to give it a new name. Uh, so instead of t, I am going to call this, let's get rid of that t, let's get rid of that t. I'm going to call this tau sort of classically, as the Greek letter that looks most like a T. Uh, so I'm going to use this Greek letter tau here. And then I'm going to point out that I can integrate the length of my curve up to any given time, T, as simply the integral from A to T of this integral of the speed of x, that's the norm of x prime of tau, integrated d tau. And so here I've changed my variable from t to tau just to avoid any confusion to make sure that t is explicitly just this letter up here. All right, and so we have a name for this function. We call this the, the length of a curve up to time t. We call this the arc length function up to time t, and we typically denote it by an s of t. All right, so here we have our arc length function. Uh, where s of t, this function that we've just defined, is the length of the curve as it's been carved out up to time t, and that is simply this integral right here. And so the final thing I'll say is that notice by the, you know, calc 1 ftc, this is an area accumulation function, and the derivative of an area accumulation function is just this integrand, right, with the appropriate variable. So by the ftc, we have that the derivative of the arc length function, x prime, or I'm sorry, s prime, is simply the speed of the curve at that given time. All right, so the derivative of s prime, this is just the speed at time t.